Okay, before we get started on the King James Version Daily Devotion of the Bible, let's have a word of prayer. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you so much for all your love and mercy and goodness, for your help in this channel to really explode, all for your glory. Many people are being blessed, they're coming for the daily devotionals, and lives are being changed, and hearts are being changed forever, all through your glory. Nothing that I do at all, it's all through you. I pray that everyone would leave here today with more knowledge of your word, of this passage, that the Holy Spirit would speak to hearts, minds, souls, lives, and it just changes forever. Help us to leave. Taking off more of man. Putting on more of you. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Tonight's scripture, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. As always, the King James Version Bible is all I use. I shall lay it some KJV upon me. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him in his heart. So the question is asked many times. If God knew that Adam and Eve was going to sin in the garden, if he knew what man was going to do in the days of Noah, and in Sodom and Gomorrah, and all throughout history, why did God create man? <coughs> it's a good question. It's an easy answer. God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He knows everything. He's known everything about everything that would ever happen before the universe was created. God always has been. He is and he always will be. Our human minds, our, our puny brains can't wrap itself around that and there's no need even trying that's where faith comes in Jesus told the disciples you know it, it's good he told Peter when Peter just uh, discovered Jesus asked who do you think I am Jesus said you and he told Jesus you're the Christ Jesus was, was impressed but he said blessed are they who have not seen and believe so God was a creator he wanted to, to create he created man in our in, in our image in his in Jesus and the Holy Spirit's image and he knew what man was going to do, but he also knew that he would be able to save man from the flood, a remnant. He knew he would be able to save, that Jesus would come down and, and die for our sins and be risen again and come back to heaven. I praise the Lord. And he knew where we'd be at today in the earth, but he also knew that, that Jesus would prepare a place in heaven when he went back to earth, back to heaven. He, he prepared a place for all of us forever. And that we would get to fellowship with God and Jesus and with the Holy Spirit and with the, with the angels and, and with all those who could come before us. <clears throat> Obviously, the Holy Spirit, if we're a true Christian, we fellowship with Him in our hearts, but we'll be there in His presence. And God knew this, and God traded all of this. That's what an awesome God we serve, my friends. He traded all this, all this sorrow, all this pain, all this letdown, where He would even, even, He would even grieve in, the, in this passage and repent that He even made man. He did it all for His huge heart that's beyond measure, knowing that we would get to spend forever. Those of us who are true Christians who finished the race with spotless garments, the way Jesus said in Revelation 3, or he would blot our names out of the book of life. Because see, here's the problem. The majority of Christians nowadays believe the lie of once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved is what Satan started in the Garden of Eden. He told Adam and Eve, you shall not surely die when you eat of that fruit. He tricked them. They thought that they would die physically at first. He said, no, you're not going to die. They thought he meant physically. He meant, he meant they would not die physically, but they died spiritually that day. But see, Satan wouldn't tell him that a spiritual death is a trillion times worse than a physical death. There's no comparison at all. Satan started that lie. It worked so well in the Garden of Eden. He's resurrected and he's doing it again. Christians are, are swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. I've got 250 scripture from the King James Version Bible in a Word document, exhaustively prepared, and commentary as well. I've shared it with hundreds. I'll share it with you. If you ask me to send it to you, send me a message. This scripture proves, not Paul Kidd's words, God's words. That if you do not repent of your sins after you're saved and finish the race with a spotless garment, you will not step foot into heaven via the rapture or any other way. So if you want the truth, message me and I'll send you that scripture. So if you fall in that category where you refuse to repent because you believe the lie of once saved, always saved, or you've never been saved before, now's the time to pray, my friends. It's time to pray to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins or to come back to him. Let's pray. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father to make a place for all your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. And when you pray this prayer, do these next steps. Number one, get you a King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it every day. You can buy it for 10 bucks online. Number two, pray daily to Jesus. He wants to talk to you every day. Number three, get water baptized, dunked under water in a Christian church. If you were sprinkled baptized in the past, it don't count, my friends. Do it over again. Number four, 
Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, sanctified from head to toe. You should draw closer to Christ by reading the Bible, praying, living for Him every day. Next, take that King James Version Bible to church. When the pastor preaches, you open that Bible. If it don't match, you close it and walk out and find some words to worship. And lastly, very, very important, like I said before, repent, repent, repent. Every time you sin after you're saved, you have to repent. If you don't, you won't step foot into heaven. It's God's word, not Paul Kidd's words. If anyone has a prayer request from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it. Praise the Lord. When I prayed for it, he gave it to me. And I've seen thousands of miracles, my friends, and I know that God will perform a miracle in your life. And I'll pray for you if you ask me to. But if he does perform that miracle, it's all him. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in his kingdom, a tiny fish in a huge ocean, a slave for Jesus Christ. Remember, it has to be in God's will for God to answer any prayer. So remember, if you're on the sidelines, you got your hands in that 55-gallon drum of hot butter popcorn, you got cases of Mountain Dew and Mellow Yellow on the, on the ground, you got an easy chair or lazy boy, get out of that bad boy and get out there with those of us who are in God's army, who are foot soldiers in the front lines fighting the battle tooth and nail. And out there reaping the harvest is so plentiful it's rotting in the field because of the lack of harvesters. Out there putting on the full armor of God morning, noon, and night. And just living for Him and taking off more of man, putting on more of Jesus every day. Very important, my friends. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. And may God bless you. Good night.